All right, all right, cool. So, uh, okay, we just went live. Thank you very much for coming through and not making me look like a liar to a bunch of people. Appreciate you. Uh, uh, <laughs> nah, sorry about that, man. My bad. bad. No, nah, it's all good. It's all good. Um, all right. Okay, I'm going to bring you into the show, and we're going to introduce you and do, like, a real quick thing, all right? Cool. All right, cool. All right, let me get this going. All right, so, Chase, kind of catch him up on what we're going to be doing, all right? All right. Cool. Yeah, so Conscious is doing the radio show, and he, uh, he'll he come and talk to us, and then he'll play one of your songs and keep talking to us, like, behind the scenes. Okay. So we're going to be live on the okay. radio okay. Okay. on Florida 91.5, and then we'll also be live okay. on YouTube cool. for behind-the-scenes kind of stuff. Popped in. I mean, and, uh, all right. So we're all right. Cool, cool, cool. All good. On air. Cool. And, um, cool. Hey, uh, Asheru, please remember that we're on air, 91.5 FM, and so FCC rules apply, sir. No, so no doubt. Got gotcha. you. Know what I'm saying so. Even though I know I don't have to worry about you too much, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, all right, hold on, let me get this going. All right, cool. So word up. So uh, I'm a man of my word, you know what I'm saying? And so, like I said, we do have the homie Asheru uh, on the show. You know what I'm saying? What's been going on, fam? How you doing? You must be having I'm good, a busy brother. day, huh? Yeah, man. Crazy, crazy day, man. And I. I've had this on my radar all all afternoon, and I I don't know how it slipped, but it did, man. Got away from me, man. My yeah, bad man. on that. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's all good. The important thing is that you hear now. You know what I'm saying. The yeah, yes sir. yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. So now, uh, real quick for the folks that may not be too familiar with Asheru, you know what I'm saying? Um, independent hip hop veteran. You know what I'm saying? You've been putting in work for a minute. Yeah, you know I mean? absolutely. Uh, let's let's go way back. Let's start from the beginning, like a young Asheru. Talk about music in the house. Like, where did it all start for Asheru? Uh, where it all started, um, really for me, it all started, I guess, at the University of Virginia. That's where I uh, met Wes Jackson and, uh, and 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 Blue Black. And uh, wait, what is this? Uh, okay. Uh, West Jackson and Blue Black, and um, we kind of all formulated right there. That's kind of the beginnings of Seven Heads, the label. Um, after graduating, uh, we kind of came together and put our first first series of projects together as the Unspoken Heard, and that's when we released, you know, Cosmology EP, uh, a few singles, um, Jamboree EP. And then the first album, Soon Come, we put out in uh, 2001. Yep. And then just kind of building it from there, um, you know, I uh, I moved forward and did a lot of solo stuff and put out a couple more projects since then. And, um, you know, fast forward to now, man, and I'm still making music as Asher Rule. Me and Blue Black are still very close. Uh, we make music occasionally. But uh, for right now, I'm pretty, I'm pretty much just out here doing it, uh, you know, as a solo artist. All right, but I mean, let's take it back even further. I'm talking about like, oh, okay. what's your first memory of hip hop? To, to the oh, to the beginning. man, my, my first memories of hip hop are, uh, I guess, the first albums or projects that I had, which were like, uh, I think the first piece of vinyl that I had was. Um, Ice T Power for obvious right. reasons, you know. Right. I was, I was, you know, Darlene had a big effect on a brother. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, but uh, but you know, P E, Ice T, Kane, Cool G Rap, Dougie Fresh, um, Slick Rick, Salt and Pepper, Heavy D. These were all like big influences on me growing up, and that was maybe, I guess, I didn't really, really, fully become a disciple until I was like ten or eleven. And um, you know, that's when I used to carry around rhymes in my in my notebook and all that. Not my rhymes, other people's rhymes, my favorite artist rhymes, and uh, that kind of just influenced me from there to to get into writing and doing my own stuff. And um, you know, just encouragement from friends and you know, and people that I was building with at the time, it just led to me really wanting to do it. Um, so I would say about eleven or twelve was like my my first like inkling of knowing that I wanted to that I wanted to do it. All right. Now were you doing any other elements of hip hop? Were you a B boy or 
No, nah, I mean, I had my I had my moment where I wanted to be a dancer, not necessarily a b boy, but like you know, I was like looking at Scoob and Scrap and different like different hip hop artists, like all the dudes, the funky bunch dudes who used to dance with Def Jeff and all of them. Like I used to kind of just pick up moves from that, but it didn't go too far, man. And I I, I wasn't really a, a graffiti writer. Uh, MCing was really my only thing. I I never really got into it. The other four elements heavy. Um, it was just MCing for me. Alright, alright. Uh, Chase, hold on. Uh, I think I'm about to transfer over. So, uh, alright, cool. Hold on. I got some top of the hour stuff to play right here on WPRK oh, okay. Winter Park, Florida, 91.5 FM. Hey, uh, Chase, what what station are we at in Canada? 93.3 CFMU. Oh, word, okay. Yeah. What's up, Orlando? What part of Canada? Hamilton, Ontario. So just okay. outside of Toronto. Nice, nice, nice. Big up, big up to Hamilton too, definitely. Nice. Yeah, so it's pretty cool when you're talking about the what you were listening to as a youngster there, and you mentioned a female artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was heavily influenced, man. Um, Salt and Pepper, MC Light, and Latifah, they were like, I mean, they were just as big to me as all of the other 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 guys I was rocking with, because at that time, you know, it was kind. It was a little more. Uh, there was a little more equality, I guess. I mean, I'm sure if you ask them, they tell you it wasn't. But as a as a viewer, as a as a follower, as a listener, we had a nice little balance of female and male MCs. You know, in the earlier parts of it. Yeah, I know. It's like not so common anymore. I don't know where those female voices are. Like, yeah, I know. They're there. They're in the underground, and like I'm getting set for International Women's Day on March 8th. We're gonna have like our entire overnight programming dedicated to women in hip hop. So, really excited about that oh, special. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that's dope, man. They're, and there are a few out now. You know, they're they're definitely a few. They just don't get the coverage and the support that some of these other dudes get. You know. Yeah, because I mean, definitely there's like Rhapsody, uh, Jean mm. Grey. Uh, in Orlando, my co-host, uh, E-Turn, she's dope. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of goodness, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, all right, now I'm back. We're actually been playing some top-of-the-hour stuff on the, you know, the airwaves. But um, let's, let's uh, I want to, okay, I think Chase told you the way it works, there's almost like two shows in one, right? So Wait a minute, babe. There's mm -hmm. the over-air stuff, you know what I'm saying? And there's like the behind-the-scenes video stuff that people can check out later on that they don't hear because we're playing music. Okay. And so I'm gonna keep, you know, just keep talking. You know what I'm saying? As I play joints. All right. Um, and there's like ten seconds until we're back actually, actually on there. Cause I want to talk about real quick. You know, I want to play a track off your new album. Sleep, okay. Sleepless in Soweto. I mean, and uh, so you're gonna pick a track, and then we're gonna get into it. Okay, hold on. Uh, oh yeah, we're back. It's our show right here, WPRK, Winter Park, Florida, 91.5 FM. We have our special guest, Asheru. Are you in D.C. right now? Yeah, I'm in D.C. right now. All right, cool, cool. Because uh, I want to talk about the DMV area behind the scenes, you know what I'm saying, as we play okay. this track off your new album, uh, The Sleepest in Soweto. Absolutely. Uh, let, let's get into one of these tracks. So uh, okay. what do you want to hear? What do you want the people to hear from you, Asheru? Oh, uh, man. Uh, actually, let's kick off with... Um, Let's kick off with Make Magic. That's the next video that's coming. So Make Magic. Make Magic. Number five. All right, All right nice. All right, so this is Make Magic from our special guest, special guest Asheru, right here on our show, WPRK, Winter Park, Florida, 91.5 FM. And Chase, where are we at in Canada? Dope FM, 93.3 CFMU. Also, uh, uh, it, uh, it's our show .net, chasemarch.com. Uh, KevinNottingham.com and big shout outs to the over 1,600 members of the Google Plus community. Hip hop is bled. All right, we're getting to this. Is Make magic. Uh, this is uh, Asheru and uh, hold on, where is it on here? Cool, Asheru, Make magic off that Sleepless in Soweto joint. All right, we'll be right back. It's our show. Easy, peace. All right, cool. So now, uh, give me a random fact about Make Magic. It could be about the recording. Was it something difficult in the writing? Something. 
uh, random fact. Make Magic is a motivator for anybody that is self-employed or following something that they really want to make happen from a thought to an actual physical thing that you can look and see it uh, and feel. Uh, I guess a fun fact about the song is at the very end there's a quote um, with uh, with Will Smith. It's actually Will Smith speaking at the end where he's talking about um, a caption of the of the book or the idea of the book called The Alchemist, and that's also a very strong influence on this song that that, that book. All right, all right. I love that book. That book is incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's. That's the whole idea behind Make Magic is, um, you know, a lot of uh, it's a big influence with that uh, with Paulo Coelho in that book, The Alchemist. Yeah. All right. So now, um, okay, real quick, let's talk about the DMV scene. You know what I'm saying? Oh, by the way, I have, uh, I know you like uh, put on Instagram the video, so go looking out. So uh, slides. I'm all about slides, and you as a teacher know how slides, oh, okay. how hip hop slides are. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. So now. Tell me about uh, the DMV area. You know what I'm saying? Because you're born and raised in the area, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Born and raised. Yes, sir. So, so can I talk about – because it's interesting to, interesting to me because the DMV is not just like three cities. It's like three states yeah. all together. Yeah. How, how did that happen? I, I have no idea, man. I mean, uh, they're all really close together, you know, but um, they are very distinct parts of the area so DMV is a recent term too that's nothing that we used to say um, growing up in, in you know growing up we'd all if you were from anywhere in this area we just say you from the area you know what I mean but uh, now it is DMV it's become more of the accepted term uh, DC Maryland and Virginia yeah but I live I live in DC DC so when I tell you know a lot of times people from the area if they're out of town and they and someone says where are you from the, the easy way to explain it is to say D.C., but if you're not from D.C., and you know, D.C. people, have, they, they have a problem with that, you know, so it's just a weird politic, man, but I'm, I'm from D.C. proper, like I live and was raised in D.C. All right, so, so you know about the go-go and all that goodness, because the only thing I really yeah. know about D.C. go-go is um, EU, the butt, right? Did you freeze? Uh-oh. Ah, uh, technology. It's because <laughs> I said uh, the butt. That's that's what it was. It, it well, shut down the internet. Yeah. Okay, okay, we good. Oh, there you go. Oh, I, I thought you were uh, just like uh, yeah, on this exactly, exactly. question. It's like, oh, what a no, dumb no, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Um, EU, no, EU was big. Uh, you know, they had their run. There's a lot of GoGo best. GoGo is a very... Um, DC specific. It's our it's our um, musical art form that we that we created that we keep going. Um, DC is huge. You, if you ever come to DC, you gotta make sure you get a taste of that before you go home. You know. Okay. All right. All right. So now, um, there's a couple of more seconds on this uh, track. Maybe like a minute left. But um, no, okay. So now, okay. So now. Where are most of the shows in the DMV area? Like, is it mostly DC? Like, is everything kind of around DC, or are heads doing a bunch of shows in Maryland and Virginia, or does everybody yeah, kind of yeah, meet yeah. in DC? No, yeah, there's a lot of spots in uh, Virginia, especially in Northern Virginia, all over DC, of course, and then uh, there are some spots in Maryland too. Uh, wait, you know, all the way out into Baltimore, you know. So there's spots everywhere that you could. Uh, you can get it in. It's not like it used to be, to be honest. You know, gentrification has kind of changed the landscape a little bit, so we figure out how to get in where we fit in. But, um, but yeah, there's still a lot of there's still a lot of spaces where where you can be hip hop and do what you got to do. You know, the reason why I say gentrification got in the way is because a lot of our live venues now have a policy where after a certain time you can't do live performances, and so it made it it made it difficult for a minute. But um, you know, in in true hip hop fashion, you know, we we push through that, and we just make our own. So now, you know, it's opened up a little bit better now. All right, all right. Um, we're back. Yeah. WPRK Winter Park, Florida, ninety one point five FM, and in Canada, what was it? Ninety three three CFMU. All right, word up. Um, 
we're here with the homie Asheru, and we're talking about the DMV area and things. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Giving us like a behind the scenes look. But um, let's start off with uh, at the at the beginning where a lot of people probably know about you. You know what I'm saying? Um, unspoken hurt. Okay. Bam. Slide. Now, <laughs> tell me about your first meeting with Blue Black. You know what I'm saying? And how that all kind of mm. because it was in college, like you were saying before, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, we all went through the same university, but Blue was a little bit before us, so he graduated a couple years before we did, and his blood, his actual blood brother was Wes Jackson, who was my boy. We grew up together. At, I mean, I grew up together, but we came up together at, at school. And um, so the first time I met Blue, he was giving me some of his music, and I thought it was the most incredible music that I had ever heard, to be honest. I, I was listening to all his early stuff like, yo, this dude, he ain't signed to nothing. He's just making this music and putting out tapes. And at the time, he was working with a brother, uh, Gingy Brown, who's another really dope producer. And uh, they had a group called Blue, Black, and Brown. And so I had I had a lot of their early stuff. So when, I first, when we first met, you know, I was just coming up um, not really writing that long or recording for that long, and here he is, is making all this music. So he was like the real deal when I was uh, just trying to kind of get on. And um, so that's how we met, and then I, I let him hear some of my stuff, and we just kind of clicked and connected, and it, it made sense. You know, when we got in the studio, it just was something that made absolute sense. A lot of the songs on the Soon Come album, 48 Months album, anything before that, um, they just those songs came together so effortlessly, you know what I mean. Some of them, I always say, some of those songs wrote themselves because it would be just conversations and ideas that we would have just talking, and then it turned into like, yo, we should, we should make this a song, or the, us, we'd be in the studio, and some of those same ideas and conversations would be you, you would find them in the rhymes, and we would just be tripping off of how how easily some of this stuff came together. So. Um, Unspoken Heard just kind of pushed from there, you know. Unspoken Heard, though, was a, was a concept and an idea that Blue Black had. Actually, he, he and Gingy and a couple other guys in Brooklyn and the Bronx, and it was like a party that they were doing. And so when we came together to do our thing, we didn't have a group name. We were just Asheru and Blue Black, but um, the Unspoken Heard was something that kind of captured the, the idea of um, being MCs, being... Um, being kind of like renaissance, man, having your hands in, in a bunch of different things and being able to dabble in different areas but still be hip-hop. And so that's kind of the concept behind Unspoken Heard and how we came came about doing it. All right. Cool. And, it's so, and it's so funny, let me just say, it's so funny that now, you know, when I look back, because here we are now, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an educator, I'm, I'm a, you know, a social entrepreneur, I'm doing all these different things. But I'm still very much hip hop, and that idea was something when I was 18, 19 years old that I didn't really grasp until I kind of like created it as I as I went. And um, to see it now is like wow, I kind of it's kind of like giving yourself a forecast of what you're gonna be in the future. And that just came out of those rhymes and conversations, not knowing that this is what I'd be doing 10, 20 years later. You know? Now, well, that's what happens when you're like a trailblazer. You know what I'm saying? Like things <laughs> just kind of happen. Um, all right, so yeah. now, with so was Unspoken Heard put together before or after the Seven Heads Entertainment label came together with Wesley? Uh, well, Unspoken Heard was there before anything, and then Seven Heads came through Wes, and then um, when we put the music out, like actually put it out as Unspoken Heard, that was the first time that it ever happened, was through Seven Heads. Yeah. Okay, now tell me about the formation of Seven Heads. Why did you guys put together a label instead of maybe, were you trying to shop your stuff also, or were you just like, we're going to do it independently? No, no, no. I think, um, well, re- really what spawned it was Wes was working for a label or two, as like right out of school. He was interning at some labels, and I think he just kind of, after a few months, was like, you know what, I could do this. And I think he just said, let me, let me start a label. You guys will be the first group on the label. And let's just go for it. And we all just kind of came together and made it happen. And so a lot of the vision and the forethought and the, even the funding and the resources at the early stages came from West, just kind of hustling and finding the means to get us in studios and 
you know, lock down sessions and, and you know, get producers to, to get on board with what we were doing. So all of that kind of jumped off from, all we had to really do was show up and be present and rhyme, you know what I mean? And he had to just kind of pull it all together. So that's really the early makers of it. And uh, from there, you know, Jay Live came on board and Elder Sensei and, and all these other dudes from that. Um, so that's how we all came together and kind of bonded as a family. Was through seven heads. All right, that's dope. All right, cool. Cause I want to, um, I'm gonna play another track off your brand new album, Sleepless in Soweto, that you actually recorded no doubt, no in doubt. South Africa. We're gonna get more into that a little bit later. But right now, I want to get everybody okay. acclimated with who you are. You know, what I'm saying if they're not familiar, and also with mm. the music that's on Sleepless in Soweto. So now dope, uh, let's dope, get to dope. another track. All right, which one you about to play now? Uh, I mean, hey, whatever you want to do, I got the whole album clean, you know what I'm saying? So we're looking out for that, too, by the way. Oh, yeah, no uh, problem, no problem. One of my joints, yo, that um, It Ain't Hard to Tell track, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. We just went in. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's one of my favorites, too, actually, on the album. It was just something I wanted to get off my chest, you know? All right, all right. So uh, let's get into that joint. So what did you want to get uh, off your chest for the folks, you know what I'm saying? Give me a random for, fact. For, from the It Ain't Hard to Tell? Yeah. Um, I guess my, my, my line in it was um, made by the most high, I'm unbreakable. My faith in myself is unshakable. Don't compare me to anybody else clearly because the difference is unmistakable. Uh, it Ain't Hard to Tell basically saying that, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a regular guy just like anybody else, but I know what my gifts and my talents are, and when it comes to this, it ain't hard to tell. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, word up. Cool. We're going to get into that. Off of Sleepless in Soweto, uh, this is our special guest, Ash Roo. No doubt. And, uh, and uh, behind the scenes, because I want, because like I said, you're a veteran in indie hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you have a, in, uh, you have a different point of view than a lot of people that I think were like maybe on major labels. And because being an indie artist, you toured all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. During kind Absolutely. of the, the indie, like the indie hip-hop, like the golden era, a lot of people will say, like the late 90s, early 2000s, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to talk about some of your experiences during that time. While I play It Ain't Hard to Tell, which is okay, funny because cool. it's, a, it's a Nas track right. also, you know what I'm saying? So it all, it all fits. All right, so uh, it's our show. We'll be right back. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's our show.net. Right. Uh, all over the internet, chasemarch.com. We're on kevinnottingham.com. Uh, word, the word is bond.com. We've got uh, the Google Plus hip hop community. Hip hop has bled over 1,600 members. And uh, you guys tuned in 91.5 FM. And Chase, 93.3 CFMU. Bam, see, I'm getting them. Um, I got the numbers down. All right, cool. Nice. So it ain't hard to tell. Ashru, we'll be right back. And uh, oh, yeah, if you want to check it behind the scenes, it's going to be on our YouTube video uh, uh, on our YouTube channel. It's our show. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. Be right back. Be easy. Peace. All right, so now, so now tell me about the indie hip hop scene from like the late '90s, and especially being from DC, which is kind of because everything seemed to be around New York, right? Right, right, right. Exactly. So tell me your perspective. You know what I'm saying, but you still got to be able to tour all over the world. Yeah, which yeah. Which is amazing. I mean, uh, That's the yeah, power of hip hop. It is absolutely, man. I mean, I think it was just. As far as our timing, we just hit a sweet spot with what we were doing, um, and you know, it didn't hurt. It didn't hurt that our label was based in Brooklyn as well. So we did a lot of road trips from D.C. to New York just to record and, and meet and do what we had to do. Um, but yeah, we were able to. Uh, I think we started traveling. We started touring like in 2001, right after the album, the uh, the first album came out. But leading up. To that first album, we had put out a lot of material over there. Exactly, we put out a bunch of twelve years. inches, like two right. EPs, I think, or something. Right, 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 right. Two EPs, like two or three singles. That's when vinyl singles were big, so we put out a few twelve inches, and um, and that just kind of built the buzz. And then, so by two thousand one, we went on our first trip overseas. We went to London. We went through the whole UK, so London, Scotland. Uh, we bounced around uh, different parts of England, and that was like. That was incredible, you know what I mean? That, that was like our first taste. And then since then, I mean, after that, we did a few more, uh, like, larger tours where we would 
out to J-Live and myself. We went out with Ed OG um, one time. We went out with a few other, like, bigger artists, artists that were bigger than us. We were just kind of out there seeing the landscape. But these trips would be like a month at a time, two months at a time. So we go all over Eastern Europe, Germany, um, Sweden, Switzerland, Finland, Denmark, you know, all of that, that whole area. And then coming back here, we go up through Canada, you know. Um, we did a lot of we did a lot of traveling, man, between like maybe two thousand one and oh three, oh four. And uh it was all just off of hip hop. And I was amazed because it it was the first time that I really got to see that hip hop was such a global thing. Like, you know, you come out of your shows and you get off stage and there'd be cats like let's say in Finland and there would be in a cipher rhyming in the freezing cold, and you don't speak a lick of, 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 you know, all you speak is English, they're rhyming in their native tongue, and you just kind of sitting there, but you can observe and see that this is a real cipher. Like, they really going in, there's a dude beatboxing, whatever this person is saying, everybody's response is like crazy. So, you know, you realize that, you know, this is so much bigger than we, what we thought it was, you know, and, uh, you know, people always say when you travel and you see the world, you see, you, you know, it changes your perspective. And for me, it definitely did. It, it definitely gave me a, a larger worldview um, and a bigger lens for me to look at hip hop through um, instead of it just being such a, you know, U.S. or New York centric thing. This is like a, a worldwide thing that everybody's taking part in. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. All right, yeah, uh, we're yeah. back with uh, Asheru. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he has a new album out. Sleepless in yes. Soweto. You just yes, heard a track indeed. off of there. Uh, it ain't hard to tell. And he's regaling us with uh, <laughs> stories of the road where he would. It's amazing to me. Like, independent. Asheru, an independent artist from D.C., touring mm -hmm. all over the world. Yeah, man. And um, so I, I, a lot of people are just mad lazy now, but that <laughs> is what it is. I think a lot of it is because, you know what I'm saying, something that you find very important. Literally, no, literally, if I could read, that'd be great. Literacy. Literacy, you know yeah. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. Speak on its importance to you, because that's that's a big thing that you really mm -hmm. try to push. Yeah, know? it is. I mean, I push. You know, some. You know, everybody has their cause or their fight that they fight for. You know, some people fight for teen pregnancy or you know AIDS awareness. My my public health issue that I fight for is literacy. And I say that because um, as an educator working with youth, I, I encounter a lot of kids who are of high school age, um, but who are reading on like an ele elementary school reading level. And it's not just one or two here and there. There's numbers of kids that are out here like that. And I don't think people really realize it. And so I, I like to approach hip hop because I was taught, I feel like hip hop taught me everything, you know, about who I am as a man. You know who I am, nation, you know nationality-wise, just everything um, culturally. I I pulled from hip hop, and so I just feel like hip hop is a natural teacher, and it's something that we can use to support literacy. Being that you know, as MCs, we're literate people. We read, we write, we you know, we use the word freely, and so it's unfortunate when people can't read. You know, they're only getting half of the, you know the the standard of living, quality of life that they that they deserve, you know. So I push I push literacy and I have a program called Help, the Hip Hop Educational Literacy Program. It's a series of workbooks. Matter of fact, here's one. Here's one right here. Here's a series of workbooks that take different MCs um and 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 take different songs and we break down the songs, the vocabulary words, the lyrics of the songs into 60 uh, reading activities that go from kindergarten level to high school level. We're in schools, juvenile detention centers, after school programs all over the country. And um, outside of that, just really pushing curriculum and lesson planning and development around hip hop lyrics and around um, contemporary writers and just kind of piecing them together. So I don't know if you've seen, um, I, did a, I did a newer version of these books, which is like a digital format that we've kind of revamped where I take a, one contemporary writer and one MC, and I merge the two together uh, around the ideas that they speak about in their words. So the first one I did was with Kendrick Lamar and Robert Frost, and I kind of merge them together and um, 
that's the first of many that are coming down the pipeline. But this was the creator of it was the health program. That's fresh. Okay. That's, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah, I'm an educator myself. Okay, like, cool. So, how can teachers get a hold of this material? We are we're in our, we're in between sites right now, but we do have like a temporary site up. It's edlyrics.com, edlyrics.com. Um, you can get more information about the books. We have everybody from Nas to Lauren Hill to um, Kanye, Ghostface, Common, Rakim, Karis, One Self Destruction. Uh, we picked the, the songs that we picked are they were strategically picked songs that we could use to deal with a social justice issue as well as just being good at hip hop. You know. Yeah, because this is really important. Because I've noticed myself that kids don't read. Right. You know. And then I was really looking at it, like, how much do kids read? Because, you know, you read two books a year, you know? You do, right, like, a right. novel study in your class, and then you do a book report. So so most kids are reading two books a year. Mm -hmm. If that, some of them right. will cheat on the Internet. And they'll get the summary, and they won't even read the book. Exactly. So like, it's like, that's pathetic, only reading two books. I read it's, this it's, book. funny. it's funny. We're in the age of information, but we we are somehow... Not, I don't want to say getting dumber, but we're just not performing the way that we were, you know. And um, I think it is because we have so many shortcuts. You can look it up on Google, or you don't need an encyclopedia or library cards and all that like you used to. Everything is very much accessible, and we have a lot of shortcuts around having to do the physical labor of writing letters and right. all of that kind of stuff. I remember you know, having so. to go to the library and going trying to remember the Dewey Decimal System. Right, you know right, saying? right. And going right. into the card catalog. Yeah, and yeah. Hoping yeah. that the book was there. Yeah, those days are over, bro. Those days are <laughs> over. But see, now, you know, it makes it difficult when teachers are working with students in schools and they have to follow the curriculum and do what they're supposed to do. But these kids, are their reading level is so deficient that you can't even really break through because you have to deal with these other issues that are going on in the classroom. So um, it's all tied together. I think that... Um, Literacy, you know, having a, a ha reading on level or having a literate, being literate um, definitely improves your quality of life. And, you know, it, it helps a lot of the issues that we see our youth going through, you know, a lot of the violence, a lot of the conflict resolution, a lot of that is, is literally behind the fact that some of our kids just can't communicate effectively. So, you know, instead of being able to, you know, resolve your conflicts, in a in a in a sensible manner, you just jump to the the animal instinct of it because you can't effectively express like, look, man, I don't even really want to fight, or I don't want you thinking I'm a punk, but I gotta put my foot down. It's, those conversations don't exist. It's just like do or die, and you know, I think a lot of a lot of life would be saved, a lot of uh, issues would be resolved if we could just get around this literacy issue and having our kids be effective readers, writers, and communicators. You know. Yeah, it's not just about communication because if you read stories, you mm -hmm. have the experiences of those characters to draw upon. So right. I read this awesome book called Read for Your Life by um, mm -hmm. Joseph Gold, and he talks about how literature is a support system and you learn from the situations that characters are in and, and you can apply that. So like if right. you read a lot, right. it, you know, it helps you everywhere in life. Absolutely. It's also the quality of the culture that you are exposed to. So, like, for me, for example, I loved to read when I was growing up, but what really fueled my my thirst for knowledge or what, what have you was hearing these different characters or references in songs. So, like, like hearing, like, KRS-One's um, um, You Must Learn, he put so much information in that one song, and then there was a video. So, you had the visual, you heard the lyrics, it made you want to go look up who Hannibal is or who, who these different historical figures are. I didn't know who who um, Shirley Chisholm was until I heard Biz Marquis say Reagan is the president, but I voted for Shirley Chisholm. Or who Joanne Chesimard was, you know. Any of these people, I kind of didn't, I didn't, I wasn't really exposed to even want to know about them unless hip-hop told me it was alright to go know about them, to be honest. And I feel like now, um, because our kids don't really have that, there's a gap there that's missing. And 
you know, as hip hop, as members of this hip hop community, we got to find ways to fill. I mean, they talk about the educational gap, but I'm just talking about on a cultural level, there's a gap that we need to fill because it, um, it is definitely a soundtrack for our lives. You know, just like you said, reading through this literature, you know, you can find a part, you can find something in literature that identifies with your current situation in life. And I feel like that's how it is with hip hop, but we, that balance isn't really there for you to pull from. And unfortunately, what they're pulling from it is, you know, um, yeah, very it's limited. A little, it's a little limited. Yeah, yeah. it definitely it a, is. Because back in the day, there was my whole thing is there's no balance anymore. Right, right. You see what right. I'm saying? And like, I agree. It, I agree totally. We had like the party joints back in the day, but we also had, like you said, Public Enemy, KRS mm -hmm. One. We mm -hmm. had all these people. Right. You had a lot of you had a lot of topics around spirituality, around what it meant to be black, what it meant to be African, what it meant to you know, be um, even with NWA, like what they were dealing with as young black men in California, dealing with police brutality, dealing with stereotypes and, and racism. So there was just a lot more to talk about that led to these other sideline conversations. And, you know, I'm definitely a product of that. If, if I didn't have that fortifying me growing up, I don't know where I'd be right now. Word. All right. Yeah. So now, um, all right, do me one because what's cool with this is your first time using Google Hangouts, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you think so far? It's cool, man. It's a little freaky, but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we're we're all over the internet right now with a live video. You know what I'm saying? Okay, it's kind of cool. crazy. Um, but yeah. okay, so uh, one more time, hold up that Help magazine for me because there's like a camera app. So oh, hold okay. it up. I want to take a picture of it. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. All right, now. this is the this is my version, the Boondocks version. But I got some more. Hold on. My bad. Hold oh no, on. you're good. You're good. Let me see. I got. I got some right here too. I got uh, this is the Barack Obama one. We actually got a letter from Obama for this, for this issue. He um wrote us the intro letter. Oh, where? That's see, dope. I got, yeah, I got Ludacris. Uh, what song is this? Tell it like it is. I got Rock Kim. It's one of my favorite books. I actually put this in Rock Kim's hand last year. Um, oh, that's, that's Rock Kim the Ghetto. That that book is is deep, man. The way it's broken down and the topics that he's talking about in the song is just is awesome, man. And I'm, I should say, all of these books are aligned with the National Reading Standards. We went through great pains to make them something that schools would pick up and bring into their uh, because you know when you talk about hip hop as an educational program. In this current landscape of hip hop, most people don't believe you. They think you're lying. So you have to show where it is aligned with the standards and the research and everything behind it. This isn't just a slap together workbook. This is years of actual preparation and development, and a team of curriculum writers and teachers and reading specialists, et cetera, came together to help get this pulled together. Because it, you know, we are representing hip hop even though we're in the school format. All right, word up. All right, so now that first uh, cover that you had, of course, had the boondocks. And so yeah, I kind of want to yeah, talk yeah. about that. I mean, while we play another track off Sleepless in Soweto with our special guest, Asher Roo, right yeah. now. Oh, by the way, do you know a May May yes, Salas? Sir. You know, do you know a May May Salas? May May Salas? Yeah, well, uh, they're a big fan of yours. So they're in the chat room at It's Our Show. Where they from where? I don't even know. Hey, uh, May May in the chat. Oh, okay. I don't even know where you're from at. Uh, where you're from at? Where you're from? And uh, uh, <laughs> we also got Tanico Carter in there, the homie Frank, uh, Ruby Tuesday, who's somewhere in the Midwest. I keep forgetting where, but he's over in the Midwest somewhere. And, okay, um, peace. Yeah, cool. So we got some people in the chat room. All right, so now we're going to talk about, you know what I'm saying, uh, the Moondocks, because that track, uh, Judo Flip, or wait, Judo Flip, not Judo, Judo Chop. Judo flip. Judo, Judo flip. flip, yeah. Judo flip. Okay, cool. Um, that's what that's the name that the the internet gave. We didn't. I never called it that, but I don't mind. It's cool. That's, <laughs> that's well, just okay. The name. Let, let's settle it now. What was the actual? Because didn't it show <laughs> up on Insomnia, uh, Sleepless in Japan, or something? It was on. Um, I had that on Insomnia. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yes, yes. But um, no, actually, no, we never put the, the full version, we never really put out. It was just something that we did, we recorded, and we just put a little snippet out there. I never really sold it or put it on an album or anything. Um, it's just out there, man, on the net. 
<laughs> but yeah, Juno Flip is is the name that I see associated with it all the time. <laughs> okay, all right. So it doesn't have like an official name or anything then. Yeah, Judo Flip, man, that's the name now. So the internet named the track. That's amazing. Yeah, the internet's yeah, naming absolutely. things before they have it. That's absolutely. awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yep. All right, let's, let's get into another track that you actually named off of Sleepless in Soweto. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know let's go to that uh, No Matter Where You Go with my no girl Wayne. All yeah. right, cool. So now, uh, random fact about the track. That track describes the plight and the story of how we got here in America and just the legacy of black folks all over the world. It's uh, the sister singing on it is a Grammy nominated Wayna, who's actually of Ethiopian descent. She's from Ethiopia, but she's she lives here in the area and uh, is a part of our arts community here in DC. All right. Now, did you know she was from? And that's it. No matter where you go. Now, did you know uh, she was from uh, Ethiopia? When, yeah. Before you recorded the track, or did it kind of just happen that way? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, you knew her from before, okay. Oh yeah, no, that's my homegirl. I mean, I've known her for years. I've known her for years, but uh, when I told her, I said, "Look, I'm working on this album. It's dedicated to the African diaspora." And I, you know, I really, you know, I was telling her about. It. She was like, "Well, I know you're not about to put that album out, and I'm not on it." And so this is actually the last song that was recorded for the album. All right, yep. word. Okay, cool. All right, so that's uh, my girl. Is, no matter where you go. Our special guest, Asheru, featuring Wayna. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So we're going to get into it. Thank you guys yep. for tuning in. It's yep, right you said now. it right. R.K., Winter Park, Florida, 91.5 FM. 93.3 uh, FM. CFMU, Dope CF. FM. Word up. And, um, yeah, it's our show.net, chasemarsh.com, thewordisbond.com, kevinnottingham.com, and uh, Hip Hop is Bled, right. Google Plus Community. Word up. So we're going to get into these joints. Uh, no matter where you go, off of Sleepless in Soweto. Thank you guys for tuning mm -hmm. in. And we're going to talk about the boondocks behind the scenes. Dope. All right, now. So, yeah, so tell me, like, how, how did that happen? How did what happen? How how did you how did your voice become the first thing people hear when they see the boon first oh, and last thing they hear right, when right, they right. watch Boondocks? Um, man, it was weird. I um I saw Aaron Magruder, who's the creator of the show. He's another DMV representative. He's from this area. He went to University of Maryland. Um, and we met just through the Unspoken Heard days. That's how long I've known him. And well, I remember him telling me. What'd you no, say? He wasn't doing the Boondocks then, right? He, he did it. He started that like in two thousand. Yeah, he was. Word? Well, he was doing part. He was doing a uh, comic strip. Yeah. yeah. It, it was a comic strip, so he did it for his school paper at University oh, okay. of Maryland. Then it then it got syndicated in like three hundred papers around the country. So when he and I were first talking about even doing the show stuff, he was still in syndication around the country in these newspapers. Okay, and he yeah, was like, man, I'm about to get a show. I'm about to work on this show. If I ever get my show, I want you to do my theme song. He told me that like four years before he even did the show. Oh, that's dope. Okay. You know, and so what, what was crazy, I was in L.A. for an education conference, and I'm sitting in the hotel lobby, and he, Aaron walks in. This is like in 04, 05. Aaron walks in, and I'm like, yo, what's up, man? He's like, yo, what's good? I gave him my, I gave him the insomnia CD at the time, and he gave me a call like maybe two weeks later. He was like, yo, this, 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 this album is incredible. He said, man, I'm gonna call you when we, uh, when it's time to really get cracking with this show. But the show is is about to happen, and he's like, you gave me a lot of inspiration and stuff to write about when I was listening to this album. So he's like, I'll be in touch, and that's kind of how it started. So then maybe about. Six months had gone by, and I didn't hear from him. I'm in L.A. again, and I happened to see him at a Most Deaf show. I saw Aaron just randomly saw him again. And so we, we went to get something to eat, and uh, he ended up telling me, like, all right, it's really about to happen now. Like, I just okay. did the deal. It, we're already in production. He's like, I'm going to gonna have my boy sing you the track. I want you to really do this, this, uh, this theme song. So I'm like, all right, bet. He sends me the track. I record it. I email it back to Aaron. He's like, nah, 
he's like, this is cool, but this isn't really what we're looking for. He was like, you know, I just need you to not mention any of the characters. Um, don't say the word boondocks and make it as black as you could possibly make it. That's all he told me. <laughs> make and it as like, black as you can make it. That's yeah, awesome. that, that's what he said. I was like, all right, well, how, how am I going to make this as black as I can? And you got to make it in 30 seconds. You got to make it in 30 seconds. So uh, I went back to the drawing board, man, and I did two. I did a second version. He said no. I did a third version. He pushed it back. I did six versions. He said no. And then the seventh version I gave him was kind of like my, I give up. If he doesn't take this one, I'm done. <laughs> and ironically, that was the one he took. So the, I have the stone at the builder. That version is like the seventh time that I kind of attempted to write that theme song. All right. Now talk about and the I, verse a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, I wrote it, I mean, like I said, again, with those directions, being black as it can be, 30 seconds, don't mention any of the characters, I wrote I wrote it as kind of like the metaphor of blackness, and so that's what I'm saying, I am the stone that the builder refused, I am the visual, the inspiration that made Lady Sing the Blues, so again, just talking about the, the strife and the struggle and why Lady Sing the Blues. I'm the spark that makes your idea bright being, meaning, you know, we're the one of the intellectuals, the geniuses who created half of the things that we use and see and do right now in American culture. Um, the spark that makes your idea bright, the same spark that lights the dark so that you can know your left from your right, that, that same spark being the divine, so being connected to the divine, the reason why we even here. Um, I'm the ballad in your box, the bullet in your gun, the inner glow to let you know to call your brother's son. The story that just begun, the promise of what's to come, and I'm going to remain a soldier until the war is won. All of that is based around just our existence in America and who we are as black people. We're the ones who were refused, and now we're the head cornerstone and all the way up in politics, sports, culture, fashion, music, etc. We kind of just um, come from nothing to where we are now. You know, so that's really the whole, that's the whole idea behind the verse. All right, all right, dope. Uh, for the folks that may not know, uh, the, maybe listen online. We're, uh, Froze. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, it's our show down now. We got Asheru, uh, the homie Asheru coming through. You just heard his track, uh, No Matter Where You, wait, uh, let me go, uh, sure No Matter Where You Go, Asheru featuring Wayna, off his album Sleepless in Soweto. And he was just telling us about uh, how the Boondocks uh, theme song came together and, and the multiple times that he did it over and over again and the criteria that, uh, uh, what do we call it, uh, right. the recruiter had. Because the first time I ever saw um, Boondocks, I'm trying to remember if it was in the Ma Miami Herald. It might have been syndicated there, but the first time I ever saw it was on OKPlayer.com uh, back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Okay. Yeah, they used to have it on there all the time, but um, all right. So now, but all that hard work and putting mm -hmm. in that thirty seconds. Yeah, of man. Joints. I mean, that was a it was a pivotal show. I mean, ah, I broke up. Hello. I can't hear you. Oh, okay, you good now? You good? Can you hear me? Okay, I got you. Yep. I was just gonna say one last thing about that whole boondocks. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I got you. And when I say they froze. <laughs> as soon as I and say something. He's still there. I know he's still there. It's yeah, like, like I can see it. A couple times. Oh, yeah. I can hear you. There you go. <laughs> it, you know what it looks like? It almost looks I, like like you fell asleep. You. You're like, and then you wake up. <laughs> All right, go ahead. No, no, no. No, no, no. I can hear you. I... No, you wanted to say one more thing about the boondocks. Hey, I was trying to get this. Uh-oh. It's messing up more now. Yeah. Don't, I got don't the Boondocks. I got a collection of it, like a, like a graphic novel thing. Yeah. Yeah, from so, all the comic strips, you would compile them into, like, like books. Yeah, I, ha I haven't seen the show because I don't have, like, premium cable or anything, but I have, I have the strips. Yeah, I mean... It's amazing the stuff that they talk about in the book. They're so, like, timely. You know what I mean? Because they're comic strips, and they talk about stuff that were going on at that time. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. 
Yeah, it's cool to see that because that, that didn't happen very much. I mean, there was a Green Lantern, Green Arrow series, and that dealt with some like issues from the hood and things like that. But um, other than that, you know, oh, did he drop out completely? I yeah, think I we know lost he him. Did. Yeah, we lost him. Boo. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll play another track off of Sleepless in Soweto. You know what I'm saying? For the people to check out. Wow, well, you hopefully, you know what I'm saying, we'll get back. Oh, wait. He's coming back. All right. There we go. Oh. Uh, I see the logo. I see the Gorilla Arts uh, LLC logo. All right, we want to talk about that also. Uh, all right, I'm going to play a track. Let me play one of these joints off of here. Um, off of Sleepless in Soweto. Out yeah. Right Yo, there you are. All right, sir. Yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> it's back, cool. though. But, uh, yeah, you said you had one more thing you wanted to uh, mention about the boondocks. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say the other pieces that uh, I don't know, some people know, some don't, is on some of the other episodes of season one, like the, um, what is it, the uh, the episode with Cat Williams um, and the guest host coming to dinner. There's uh if you listen to that if you see that episode there's a there's a song that Blue Black and I did for that episode on there um also did something for the Itis episode and then the Martin Luther King episode that speech that he gives at the end was taken from another song from that Insomnia album um which was dedicated to the to the last poets called um actually the song was just called I don't know if I can say this on the air, the yeah, N word. Yeah, no. Is that a is that a uh, yeah, word no. that you can't use on radio? Exactly. It's cool on Cartoon Network, <laughs> so, apparently. It's right. cool on Cartoon Network. That song, that yeah. that, that speech. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> but yeah, that came from that song as well. That that speech, and that's actually the song that I mean. That episode is what won us the P the Peabody Award and bam, all see, stuff. Bam. I got it right that. there. I, yeah. I wanted to talk about it too. See, bam, slide Peabody Award. That perfect. That leads right into it. Talk talk about getting the Peabody Award. That that's big. All right. You know what I'm saying? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when people know man. Peabody it's Award huge. is it was it's awesome. I, I was honored to even. I was just honored to even be in that. Uh, oh my bad. I think we have like a delay. But the Peabody Award. No, the Peabody Award is given to individuals who excel. In journalism, okay, okay. radio, television, like, and there's only like a few given out each year, and you got one in was it 2012? Mm -hmm. Right. Twenty. I got. We got that in 06, oh, 07. Damn, 06, Okay. Yeah, it was ill. I don't know how. I don't even know how that happened. Yeah, yeah. It was shortly after the first season, but um, it was the first time that a cartoonist or MC have ever won that award. So. It was an honor, man. Definitely. Oh, that's dope. All right, cool, cool. Now, um, hold on. Talk about DMV. Yeah, hey, uh, yeah. Chase, is there any lyrics that? Because Chase is like the lyrics guy of you know the interview. Is there anything you want? Because okay. I mean, Ashru got some crazy lyrics. Is there anything you wanted to bring up? Uh, yeah, I got a couple. Um, I I was listening to like when we we heard you on. I was like, I had songs like stuck in my head, right? <laughs> uh, but. You've been doing this for a long time, oh, okay. so I guess you don't run out of ideas, but there's a nice lyric here that says, if there ever come a time when Ash run out of lines, I hand in my dear you letter and resign, but don't hold your breath. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, right. so like... Right, I mean, right. Don't hold your breath. Yeah, so like you've got... Like you don't run out of stuff. I bet you don't have to like deal with writer's block or anything, right? You just like are constantly nah. able to... Yeah, no, I go through it. I go through it here and there, but I mean, to be honest, man, you know, life is so is full of so many experiences and nuggets of inspiration to pull from. It's just a matter of how do I want to phrase it or how do I want to capture, you know, what's going on, and um, and that's how a lot of the music is made. You know, just from my conversations and experiences and things that I'm doing, it just all kind of. So as long until I run out of those things, I, then I will. I guess I run out of things to talk about. But you know, it's a lot going on, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm kind of the same way. Like, I mean, I learn stuff through talking. You know, like you come mm -hmm. up with so many ideas just right, from talking. Right. 
Because if you just sit down with a blank page, sometimes you don't have anything, but you sit down with a buddy and you talk and you like come up yeah. with tons of stuff. Exactly. You come up with tons of stuff, you know, and that's 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 kind of the rapport that um that creating is all about. It's taking these different things and synthesizing it into whatever your creation is, whether you're a painter, a writer, a journalist, a photographer, you know, it all adds to it, value to what you do as a creator, you know. All right, dope. And um well real quick, uh May May Solace is from Texas. They're tuned in from Texas. Right? Oh, okay. Um, Okay, cool. What's up, y'all? I'm hoping to come out to South by this year. I'll be out in Austin, hopefully, in, in a couple weeks. All right. We'll see what happens. Now, talking about uh, creation real quick, uh, you created uh, Gorilla Arts, Inc. Talk a little bit mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's the label, right? We are a... Uh, it's a label, but it didn't start as a label. It's a it's a youth organization. It's a local arts and education and youth focused organization um, here in D.C. where we recruit, we train, and we employ artists to work directly with the youth in schools, after school programs, etc. And we we have them work in the fields that they are specialists in. So. If you are an MC or a poet, we have you lead a creative writing class or a music production class. If you paint murals or do graffiti, then we have you in our illustration class. DJs, um, martial arts, culinary arts, gardening, social media classes. We, we pretty much capture whatever the students want to do. We find someone within our local arts community and we place them with these kids. We hire them, we pay them well, and we just kind of go around the city um, doing this kind of work. So we're in four sites right now in D.C., uh, in the D.C. area, and we're always looking to do more. But Guerrilla Arts is the hub of these artists who are doing this work, and then also it's the home for the help program, and naturally, you know, all of the music and stuff that I've been putting out, uh, I do it through Guerrilla Arts, so it's all connected. Um, and, you know, and the way that it works is, you know, you supporting the Asheru album, you're really helping to support the programming that we do, the youth programming through Guerrilla Arts as well, because it's all, it all runs together. You know, some of my videos and some of the, the promo work that I've had done, I've done with students. You know, I have a video coming up for a song on the album, Funky DC, that we're going to do shortly, and that's going to be shot totally by students uh, and featuring... Um, one of our marching with us surprise. I can't tell you the, who's going to who's going to feature, but it's going to be made by students, and um, and so that that kind of work is it all feeds back into like just kind of like what we just were talking about how your life work and your experiences feed into your art. This is a perfect guerrilla arts is basically the example of that. So all of the artists that we work with are are reputable, known, um, maybe not known, but reputable, professional. Highly regarded, very good at what they do, and we just match them with the kids who want to learn how to do it. And it's easier for me to show you as an artist who does it than to read from a book and give you a history lesson on what it is, you know. So we try to match them up and, and have them in the schools doing that work. So what what age of students are doing this though? Like how young are you going down to? Um, we go from we go from, we, right now we have a capoeira class the third and fourth graders. So we go Damn. to early childhood all the way up to nice. high school. Yeah, to high school. So right now, like currently in the spring, the, the classes that we're offering, we have capoeira, music production, uh, visual arts illustration, um, and we have two more visual arts classes at another site, uh, another music production lab. So we just kind of branched out into these different sites. But we, we only bring in the people according to what the school and the kids are saying they want to have. So some kids don't want martial arts. Some kids want to just learn how to make beats and, and rhyme. So we'll put an MC and a producer in that class with them. Some kids might want to just learn how to make a mural so we know who to bring in. So we really we feed off of what they tell us they want, and we tap into this ecosystem of artists that we have here. And they really is a support for the artists as well because a lot of them travel, they don't hold full-time gigs, so this is a good way for them to make money, to give back to their community, and to still keep doing their craft, um, and so it, it, it's, it just kind of is a natural fit for everybody involved. Yeah, that's dope. All right, all right, so let's get into another track. You just mentioned it. Uh, let's get into Funky DC. Funky DC, yes, sir, yes, sir. 
Random fact. Shout out to DC. That, that that names every that names every area and neighborhood in DC moving into Virginia and Maryland. So that's the it's like a DMV anthem, so to speak. All right, all right, nice. Yeah. And, um, yeah. and then behind the scenes, while we're playing the track, we're gonna talk about because uh, Chase has a question that he's been asking all the different artists that we've had on the show. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna okay. he's gonna like, compile them and stuff. All right, so this is Funky DC. It's featuring. Yeah. Say the names for me. People uh, Funky DC is produced by a band called The Funk Arc, based out of DC. They signed the Thievery Corp, where they were with Thievery Corporation, and uh, the other brother Satali is uh, a, a very dope singer who's also from West Africa and uh, living in the DC area. All right, all right, cool. So we're gonna get into it. Uh, this is Asheru off his new album, Sleepless in Soweto, out now. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. It's our show. We'll be right back. Be easy. Peace. All right, Chase, go right ahead, sir. All right. Yeah, I'm asking this question to see what kind of a response I get, see if maybe there is such a thing as a rap music canon. Um, so what is a must-have rap album, an album that, you know, has to be in your collection and that you think your students and everybody should hear? Man, for, for me or just in general? Uh, in general. In general, um, a must-have. There's so many, man. Um, I mean, you must have Midnight Marauders by Trap Hall Quest. Nice. You have to have that one. That's one that you have. One of many, but that's one that you have to have. Absolutely no exceptions. Why are you picking that one? Man, that album... Um, <laughs> That album was it was everything to me, man. Like that era of my life, um, that was my soundtrack. You know what I mean? From Low in Theory into Midnight Marauders had a big influence on just how I how I even approach hip hop. You know what I mean? And the Q Tip with just the conversational style and the tone that he used when he was rhyming, and you know um, the way that they communicated ideas it wasn't just the typical way of saying it so I just think that was a just solidly produced album like the beats everything it's just a well put together project you know both of those albums actually were well put together yeah and did you experience your hip-hop that way because I know when I was growing up I had to listen to the radio and I had to listen to community radio like mm -hmm. the station I'm on up mm -hmm. here and so, so you had right, to listen right. late at night to get your hip hop. Yeah, yeah, I did too. We had to listen to uh, we had to listen to W O L fourteen fifty A M, which was our radio station back then. And I mean, that was the only doses of hip hop that I could get for a sustained period of time, like where I could make a tape and actually play it again later. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I definitely feel what you're saying, and it came on real late at night too. It wasn't like a it was it was like after ten or eleven at night, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Do you, you still know. have any of those tapes? <laughs> nah, man. I wish I did, man. It's funny because my my cousin that I that I remember having these moments with, he lives in Vegas now. He's a DJ in Vegas, and he just put out a um like a single. He just put out a single of his own, and in that single, he's naming all of these songs that we grew up on. You know what I mean? And I guess he's kind of making like a reminisce or back in the day kind of anthem but um some of the songs he mentioned I was like man I, I like I didn't forget but it's been so long you know what I mean you you, you forget how far hip hop has come you know what I mean good and bad but it's come a long way for sure so um now uh it, it's crazy because back then like you're saying it was like hip hop I guess it was so new that it was regulated uh to just being Late night. It's like a late night thing. Right. Like right. Keep behind closed doors type of thing. You know what right. I'm saying? But now right. it's every like like Even this now. show is five to seven PM. Like we're in oh, the Oh, that's that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, My that's not what you know, night. but you but you know that's not common either. Yeah, I kinda snuck in there. It's kinda yeah, they were, yeah. They're, they're kinda not expecting it, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, we we, we lucked out, you know what I mean? We're Midnight oh, yeah. Riders on Dope FM, though, because that's when we start. Oh, really? Yeah. At midnight? 
Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, some people can't handle the truth, man. You got to keep it late night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's too much for the daytime. But now, I mean, with the internet, like, you can listen to anything at any time, at any point that you want now. You right. Understand? Right, right. And that, and that's what I mean by it's come a long way. Like, for all of the bad, you know, you can definitely talk about how corporate has become corporatized and there's a lot of just BS going on in the game. But on the other side of it, our accessibility to it has changed a lot as well. The way that we can access this music and culture and how fast it moves now, you know, you put out a single and, I mean, nowadays you can put out a single on your own, you can just release it, you know what I mean, on the internet if that's what you wanted to do, well, you couldn't do that before, so it has its pluses and its, and its negatives. All right, um, real quick, in the chat room, uh, May May Salas had a question, um, can you give advice on how you achieve so much? Uh, what made you keep going? What motivated you? Um... What um I, I don't know what advice I would give. I would just I mean the advice I would give is to honestly look inward and just figure out what is your thing. You know what I mean? And sometimes it could take it could take days, months, sometimes it could take years for you to answer that question. But once you find it, you know, doing it is just it's just as natural as breathing, but you just have to figure out what it is, and then um, I think that's the hard part of it. And then once you once you can identify it, you know, and you make it happen, the universe just kind of opens up for you to make it happen, you know. And that's again referencing this book, The Alchemist, but that's kind of how I live my life, you know what I mean? If I, you know, I I had a, a friend of mine, perfect example. I had a friend of mine that was saying. You know, I want to go overseas, man. I want to, I want to get out there and travel and and do my thing with this music. And when we were talking, he was very passionate. He really, he sounded like he really was serious. He really wanted to do it. But when I, I but then I asked him, "Do you have a passport?" He said, "Nah, I ain't got one of those." And I was like, "Well, dude, you got to get a passport first. Like, the step don't start until you're ready to receive it. You know what I mean?" So. With anything, you know, and it goes back to your question. I think, I think the reason why I'm able to do so much, and you know, sometimes I don't look at it as being a lot because I'm just being, I'm just being, I'm doing what I'm feeling like I'm called to do. So I do education, and I do, and I make music. Sometimes I sacrifice one for the other. Sometimes they work harmoniously, and I'm able to get it all cracking on all cylinders. But you know, it's all trial and error. I mean, I went three years between my last project in this Sleepless album, but I traveled to South Africa eight times and did a whole bunch of other things and life issues got in the way and just so many things that I got caught up in doing, but it all fed the experience of what I was creating. So I just try to find ways to tie it all together and instead of me, um, instead of me waiting for something to happen in order for me to be what I am, I'm just doing it the reverse way and just being what I feel like I am and doing it to the best of my ability and I can make whatever reality I want to make, you know what I mean? And I think that's the that's the balance that we have. We all have to find. We all have to go through it, you know? All right, so you, you brought up the, um, the new album. I got it right there, Sleepless mm -hmm. in Soweto. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So now mm -hmm. you traveled to Africa eight times. I've never been there once. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. I want to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got your passport, brother. I am working on it. Um, <laughs> See? No, no. I'm telling you though. No, I am working on a package right now. Okay. It's going to be amazing. And yeah, okay. I, I okay. have the forms. I have the forms filled out. I just need no to doubt. send it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm Watch how fast it happens. As soon as you get it in your hand, it's like your ticket is on the way. Just know that. Just remember I told you that. Good word. I'm going to shout you out when I get over there. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, now, sir. Let's talk about this album, Sleepless in Soweto. Where did it come from? Because you did a Sleepless... Sleep, did, is that official? The Insomnia, Sleepless in Japan, and Insomnia, mm -hmm. Sleepless in D.C. Are those... Because we were talking about how the internet named some of your songs already. Now, right, this right, way, right. this kind of yeah, compiled that's, joints that's or... Florida. No, no, that's real. I put out the Sleepless in D.C. The first Insomnia was just a Sleepless in D.C., and I put that out. But then uh, a Japanese label contacted me, and they wanted to do, like, an exclusive 
So I did I, I did a modified version of the Sleepless album. I added some other tracks, and we did Sleepless in Japan. Um, and then just from doing the work in South Africa, you know, I, I was inspired. I wanted to put this. I definitely wanted to put out an album that spoke to my experience in South Africa because I had been going so many times. Now, why were no, unless it's too personal? Why were you going to so many times? No, no, it's not. It's not personal. Um, well, long story short. There's a brother from South Africa named uh, Double HP, Hip Hop Pencil, HHP. He he's came to the, the U.S. Album. He's all over the album. He um he came to the states to do a cultural exchange kind of visit. Um, a, a mutual friend of ours brought him here, actually to meet me because I guess something in him made him feel like he he reminded him of myself and somehow he was like, I want you to come to the states. We'll host you and I want you to meet this brother Asheru. That's how I got started. He came to the stage. We kicked it for two weeks. We did shows. We recorded a lot. I took him all around and showed him different things. And um, he was so impressed by the whole thing. He was like, yo, when I go back home, I'm bringing you and the whole band to South Africa. We're gonna, I'm going to bring all of y'all down. So we, I, we were like, dope. Like, shit, I mean, you know, just call me. Let me know when. My bad. So, <laughs> so, so he... Uh, so he, you know, a couple of weeks after he went back, he called and was like, yo, passports, are you are y'all ready? I need your numbers. I'm about to book these tickets. So he booked five tickets. We came down. It was we had a show called The Homecoming. It was like this, it was it was incredible. I've been to Senegal before. I'd never been to any other part of Africa. This is my second visit to the continent. Uh, but my first time in South Africa, and I was so overwhelmed, man. I just, I, I, I mean, I was seriously overwhelmed by just the love and the hospitality and how similar our culture, like stuff that I was seeing there, I was like, that's just like home, you know? So it just, I just saw these connections happening. And from that one trip, these other seven trips just kind of spawned out of that. So we came back, we did more shows. We went back again and did tour during the World Cup. Um, oh, some of the members crazy. of my band went back. Oh, it was it was incredible. It was the first time the World Cup was ever in the continent of Africa, so it was just it was just a big deal. Um, some of my band members though, they went back. They filmed two seasons of a television show down there as the house band on like his uh, almost like a Jimmy Fallon kind of show. Oh, that's dope. Okay, so and, he um, so he's not just yeah, like an MC so, so over all there. He does a bunch of stuff. Oh yeah, he's 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 a he's a total personality over there. You know what I mean? He's he's the man. He's definitely the man. Yeah, I mean, if you're and he's very five humble though. So you know, he didn't. Yeah, yeah, he did. And I I mean, I I must say, man, he did. He met, he definitely made that happen. And then um, it just you know, as more trips went on, it's, it's the numbers slowed down, and it was primarily me and my brother Omar, who's like uh, he produced most of the album. So he and I were going back and forth a lot um, toward the last few trips. And just being there, recording with a lot of these different South African artists, um, being in the culture, just being there, being there, eating the food and, and going out and doing shows and meeting with youth organizations and all of that kind of stuff I was doing. And it just kind of inspired me and made me, again, it was like another revelation that hip-hop is so much bigger than what we think it is being here in America, you know, and so to be in that, immersed in that culture and their expression of hip hop, um, it just kind of, it just really influenced me, you know, and I rem it took me back, you know what it did, it took me back to the earlier eras of hip hop that I grew up in where I wore African medallions and I was heavily influenced by, you know, x Clan and, and all of these different Afrocentric hip hop groups, so um, it was like really it was really like a, a solidifying moment for me just as an MC, as a hip hop um, participant in general. It just, it really glued a lot for me. So this whole album was dedicated to just that experience, you know, and um, I named it Sleepless in Soweto because I, one, we rarely slept. We, we spent a lot of time just traveling and going in between cities. Um, and so when we did get those rare moments to sleep, it was very few and far between. But but not only that, but then also playing on the same line of these other sleepless projects, it just all kind of made sense. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it sounds like Sleepless in Seattle too. Like you know, like yeah. <laughs> right, right. It sounds like a rip off a movie or something. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it does. And I mean, the other part of it though is you know the whole concept and idea of somebody of me being a conscious rapper. You know, it's also playing on that whole thing of well, aren't we all? Aren't we all conscious? Aren't we all awake at some point? Like, exactly. whoever isn't, y'all are just sleeping. You know what I mean? So it's like almost, it's also almost, you know, playing on that and, and letting people know don't sleep on your boy, man, because I'm out here and, and, you know, we making good music. And it's going to continue because where the place that it's coming from hasn't changed. Everything else might have changed around us, but the place that it's coming from for me has it, always been there. And, um, so, you know, I, I love making the, music, the type of music that we make, you know. All right, that's dope. I've never changed. I, I just keep making more. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You found your yeah. lane and, you're, you know, you're doing it. That's the most important thing. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Cool. So, uh, we mentioned and, I mean, I know, that, I know that that's my lane, you know. Yeah, exactly. And you're just trying to get better at it and, it's, you know, improve. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, that's what life should Absolutely. be about. Knowing your lane, you know what I'm saying, and just improving on it. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? All right, uh, let's get into another joint. Um, let's get, okay, you mentioned Omar. Why does Omar have, like, three different names on this project? Man, he's he's a complex brother, man. <laughs> he's, a complex, <laughs> okay. he's a complex brother, that's all I can say. All right, cool. I was wondering, I was like, is it because it's, like, the name, then the parentheses, then a the slash? I was right. Like, is this a yeah. group or what is I know, this? I know, I know. His name is Omar Hunter L. But it you know, he has a DJ name, he's a producer name, he has a MC name, so it's a lot. It's a lot. But a lot of those tracks he produced, so you might see like the producer's credit plus his MC credit. And right. that's why you see it like that. Okay, cool, because I want to get into uh we'll, we'll we'll sign off, you know what I'm saying? Because we kept you for like how long? Like almost an hour, I think. How is this? I mean, it's pretty cool, right? This is, this is all right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this is, this is dope. This is dope. This all is right. dope. This is definitely dope. I told I told some of my people in SA and South Africa to get online too, um, but because I missed my time, they might have said, "Man, we we gone. We out of here, man." You know. So I I, I got to make up to them now. I got to no, make is, up. This is recorded on YouTube. Like when, once this is over, it's gonna be available on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, cool, cool. cool. And then I uh, what yeah, I do no. is. I do timestamps so people will be able to kind of like click a certain section and kind of fast forward, rewind to certain sections. You know oh, okay, that's dope. So man. you don't have to that's like watch cool. the whole hour all together. You know what I'm saying? You can catch yeah. all the parts. Yeah, and I'll play it later. I'll play it later, like next week or a couple weeks down the road on Dope FM too. Word up! So we're all over the place. We're all all right, let's go. We're on like five different websites. We're all over the place. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, okay, so let's go, get into this go, joint. Go. Uh, okay, I want to play So Amazing, featuring HHP, Word. Omar Hunter with his yeah. many names. So give me a random right, right, right. fact about that joint. That was uh, recorded in Johannesburg with a brother named Tasso who made the beat. And I really, you know, I had gone out to the clubs and I had seen how big house music was. Like, house, house music is... It's really deep for South Africans, man. It's a really, it's deep, deep. I mean, seriously, you got to see it. But um, when we were at his house, I was telling him, like, yo, man, I want to make a house track. I want to get into this and, and really make, like, something that sounds South African, you know. And um, the brother played a few beats, and he when he played that beat, it was instant. I was like, that's the one, you know. And, uh, and then uh, another little tidbit was in the studio at the time named Harrison Crump. Who is? Uh, he's actually from Chicago. He's a big producer, a house music pioneer, and uh, he heard the track and he was like, "Yo, I'm gonna sing the hook on it." Now this brother doesn't sing normally; he just writes and produces. But something inspired him to get up and want to sing, so he sang that hook, and uh, it just kind of the song just kind of again one of them things where we're all in the moment, and the song just kind of wrote itself, you know. That's dope. But that's actually that's that's like one of the um, that's the first single that's going to pop in a minute down in South Africa. Not the first, but um, the second single that's going to pop is so amazing. So definitely, um, I'm excited about that one. I'm very excited about that one. Wow, that was the first time I heard my music on South African radio. I, I mean, we put out a song two years ago called Dream Girl 
they got a lot of spin in South Africa, video and all that, but this one was the first time that I heard like an announcer say, coming from the upcoming Sleepless in Soweto album, this is Asheru, so amazing, blah, 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 like on the radio, I was like sitting in the car listening, going crazy, like, yeah! <laughs> but uh, that was like that was a big moment for me, man. That was uh, that was a really really big moment for me, man. To hear that, to hear that play for like five million people in the AM rush on the radio, like prime time. That was really really dope. So this is so amazing, and um, it's dedicated. It's, it's one of them house records, man. And it was so Get amazing when songs. you heard it. You know what I'm saying? So that's hey, yes, man. yes indeed, yes indeed, yes indeed. Uh, and then uh, behind the scenes. Joke. Um, I want I want to talk a little bit more about the album and then what's what's coming up for you. All right. Okay. Cool. So cool, cool this cool. is so amazing by our special guest Ashru, uh, featuring HHP, Omar Hunter, and who's on the hook again? Harrison Crump. Harrison, Harrison Crump. Crump. All right, word it up. So thank yeah, you guys for tuning yeah, in. Yeah. And once again, this is also Sleepless in Soweto, and we'll be right back with uh, final shout outs and all that good stuff. All right, it's been our show. Be easy. Peace. Be right back. All right. All right. Okay. Let me make sure all this is down. All right. So now, did you say, like, how long did it take to record the album? Uh, it took off and on about two years. Just oh, okay. Between the travel and, you know, putting it all together, about two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dope. So now, all and right. There's, so a lot of, there's a lot that didn't make the album, so we, we thought about putting a, another, like, a deluxe version of something else uh, down the road with some of the other songs that didn't make it, you know. Okay, on some uh, still yeah. sleepless. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, all right, so now, what's next? I mean, you've traveled pretty much all every continent besides like Antarctica. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else is going on for uh, Ashru? Um, so now I am uh, still really hardcore pushing the programming with Guerrilla Arts. Um. Recording some new stuff. I'm working with a couple artists, um, and just gearing up to travel, man, and go back to South Africa and uh, different parts of Southern Africa this summer. So uh, I'm looking forward to that and just pushing the music, man, and continuing. I got some speaking engagements coming up at a few universities where I'm I'm going and doing kind of like listening party lectures around the album. So I go in and I talk about the the creation of this project, but then we go into talking about media representations of blackness. Um, we talk about uh, artist responsibility. We just, you know, we touch on a bunch of different areas, but all in the lens of this Sleepless project and breaking down some of the songs and talking about the process. And I'm doing that with schools um, in their mass comm departments or their black student unions and just matching and working with them to bring to bring this kind of programming to their school and, and um, just spreading the word that way, man. You know, I want to be non-traditional because this is a non-traditional album. So that my methods in promoting it and getting the word out are, are very non-traditional. It's more in the space of having these conversations around hip-hop and culture and, and what we are and who we are and, and then from there introducing them to the music. Because there's a lot of, there's a new audience that isn't familiar with any of my work. They may only know me from the boondocks, and I realize that, you know what I mean, but um, there's a large catalog of, of other music that I can expose them to, and ideas and concepts and themes that I still want to address and have in these conversational spaces around hip-hop. Exactly, because you want them to uh, like experience Ashru, not just hear of Ashru, pretty much, right? Right, right exactly, and I mean, you know, and it, we did one at Morgan State, we got one coming up at Texas A&M. Um, and some other schools on, on the docket. I've done it in a couple of high schools. But really just, you know, it's interesting what come, the conversations that come out of it because, you know, um, like perfect example, one of the workshops that I do with, with youth is I'll, uh, and I'll make it quick, but what I do is I have them draw a grid on a sheet of paper, right? So they, they draw three columns. And first, before they even do the three columns, they tell me who their top five MCs are or rappers or singers or whatever, top five which becomes a whole process in itself to get somebody to narrow it down to five. But they write their top five, and then I, I have them, I write columns. So I, in the first column, I write topics like 
God, religion, sex, spirituality, education, incarceration, what have you. And then in the second column, I have them write, what do your top five rappers say about these topics? So they tell us what they say about women and God and religion and money and school, education, etc. And then in the third column, I ask them, what do, you, what do your parents and or family say about these things? And most times when I do this activity, I find that what, the, what their top five artists say and what their parents say is exactly opposite for almost every category. You know what I mean? So instead of me saying that the music is bad for you, that it's having a negative influence, which I kind of think it does in, certain, in, the, in, the, in the layman's hands, it is kind of dangerous. But rather than me attack it from that way, I'd rather just use it as a teachable moment and put it in context and have a conversation around it. And then you can decide later whether you think it's trash or not. I'm not going to tell you my personal opinion on it. I'm just here to put it in context and have the discussion. And so um, a lot of times, I, you know, what comes out of these conversations is incredible, you know. And, um, you know, I look forward to doing more of it and traveling. And so I'm not just doing shows when I come to your town. I'm coming to your schools or programs. And then, you know, later on that night, we I catch you at the show, you know. And that's kind of how I've been doing it. All right. That's dope. All right. So we may have to yeah. have you come because we have a hip-hop community center here in Orlando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spot. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, so man, I'd love to. to. I would love to. Let me know. You know, I'm, I, my, my mother lived in Orlando for 15, 16 years, so I used to be down there a lot. You know oh, what okay. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I'll definitely, I'll come back no problem. All right, word. Sounds good. All right, all right. Yeah. Um, so now, uh, if somebody wants to bring you to their area, how can they reach Asheru? Um, you can go to AsheruWorldwide.com and all my info is there. You just reach out to me directly, hit me on Facebook or Twitter or what have you, and um, I'm accessible. You know what I mean? That's the other thing. I don't have a manager, so to speak, so you don't have to go through no middleman. You can just call my brother, email me, let me know what's good, and we can figure it out from there. You know? All right, uh, Chase, anything else you want to say, sir? No, oh, man, this has been nice. Uh, I like how we were talking about literacy and all the educational stuff, and I got to try to find some of those resources and get those in my school, man. That sounds really yeah, cool. Yeah, man, absolutely. Hit me hit me anytime, man, offline, and I'll, I'll shoot you. I'll send you a package, you know what I mean, and we can go from there. Oh, great. For sure, Thank for sure, you, sir. definitely. Yeah. I mean, we got to do this work. Making, con yeah. making connections, you know what I'm saying? That's what we're doing on That's our right. show. You know what I mean? That's right, that's right. And I appreciate the love, man. Thank you for having me and uh, allowing me to come on board and try this Google Hangout thing. This is dope. Anytime. You know what I'm saying? The digital yeah. door is open. You know what I mean? So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any, anytime you want to come back, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, we'll talk more and just, yeah, we'll we'll shoot the stuff. Okay. I mean, Sounds good. Sounds good, man. Definitely. Right. Well, okay. So uh, you want to end off with one more joint? Ah, yes, I do. I don't know if I want them to rock with that Sleepless or um, Do You or the first, give them the first track, Sim Peeway's theme. That's my um, that's my theme music right there. Now, and tell then, me about Sim, Sim Peeway. Sim Peeway. Yeah, Sim Peeway. Sim Peeway is the name that I was given. That's my Zulu name that I was given down the essay. Oh, and yeah. it, it means, uh, it means, uh, it means kind of like a, uh, he, uh, it was given, or it is he or she is a gift, and that's what they are. Uh, that's the name that I was given by the band and all the double HP and all the people down there. And so, uh, Sim Pee is my name, but that's the opening track of the album. And the actual intro, there are a couple, there are a couple snippets of people talking throughout the album. The first person speaking is James Baldwin, and it's from a speech, not a speech, but a conversation, kind of like what I just described that conversations. It was a conversation that he and Dick Gregory were having with a room full of uh, West Indians who live in London. It was like a, a black West Indian organization brought Dick Gregory and James Baldwin to speak to them about the struggle in the civil rights movement and blackness, et cetera. And so um, that piece that I have on there is, is James Baldwin speaking about the black personality and how we have to maintain and preserve the concept and the idea of the black personality and not let it be co-opted. So that's what opens the album. 
on Make Magic, we have Will Smith, uh, like I was mentioning earlier. At the beginning of It Ain't Hard to Tell, that's actually an excerpt from an Iceberg Slim book where Iceberg Slim actually reading. Um, and so those are like key clips that are, and then on Sleepless, there's a piece from the movie Waking Life that you hear playing throughout the, uh, the song. So there are different themes and again, concepts and inspirations that influence each one of these songs. And so when you hear one of these vocal clips of someone speaking, that statement that they say is basically the encapsulated version of what the song is. So that's just a guide for you to have when you listen to the album. I had a friend come over the other day. He's like, man, this album is like a book. He's like, it's like reading a good book, listening to this album. And that was a compliment to me. You know what I mean? I know that might not be sexy for the, the industry and how we're supposed to put this music out. But for me, it's a compliment because it is food for thought. It is something that you can have. And when you read a good book or have a good book, you keep that good book forever. You don't throw that book out when you're done. You come back to that book, you revisit pages of that book, and so I hope that's what happens when people come in contact with my music, and especially with this album. Ah, that's dope. All right, that's a yeah, perfect yeah. way to end it off. Uh, once again, people can find out all the information from you, AsheruWorldwide.com. So it's A S H E R U W O R L D W I D E dot com. I'm really big into spelling. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> so, yeah, tech. I mean, if you go there, you can get information on the help program, on Guerrilla Arts, contact, the music, everything is there. I put it all in one spot. So, nice. yeah, definitely check me out. All right, word up. So, uh, thank you very much for your time. You know what I mean? Thank and you, brother. Thank you. knowledge with us. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like I said, anytime you want to come back, let me know and we'll set something up. For sure. Will do. Will do. Thank you, man. I right. appreciate it. Appreciate your fam. All right, Canada, I'll see y'all soon, too. I'm hoping to come up there soon. Nice. All right, I'll see y'all, man. Thank you. All right, BZ, thanks again. All right, Continue peace. success. Thank you, bro. Peace. Hey, peace. 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 Nice. So, so that, was, that was damn awesome, Chase. That was really cool. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot of stuff done and talked about a lot of stuff. It was, it was worth the wait. It was, very, yeah. it was really worth the wait. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I was getting bored because you told me to turn my music off, so I'm like sitting here for an hour. Well, the like... thing is, Google doesn't play with the content ID thing. So if you do that, turn off your mic because yeah. they will, they'll give you like two warnings. Like, hey, we recognize this music. You can't broadcast this. And like, hey, yeah. you keep playing it. We're going to shut this down. Boom, and it's done. Oh, and okay. Then, and they'll give you like, and I think after a while, it's like six months until you can do another hangout. Oh, that would yeah, be good. <laughs> exactly. They don't, they don't play. So that's why I was like, just mute your mic or turn it off or do something because, yeah, yeah. Cause it's... Yeah, I turned it off because I didn't know, but maybe the next time I could just turn the mic off. But yeah. normally we don't have to wait, so I'm yeah. glad we did wait, though, because I was almost like, I should just book. Um, <laughs> but that was it. Book, ha, was... huh? literacy. That's something yeah. we talked about. <laughs> and knowledge was being dropped right there, so. Yeah, cool I think stuff. everybody had a good time, so it was, it was awesome, you know what I'm saying, so. One of the many joints. So, and for people who weren't able to, you know, stick around or what have you, we'll have the recording up at, uh, you know, chasemarsh.com. I'm assuming. Yep. Uh, the word is bond.com. Uh, it's our show.net. KevinNottingham.com. Uh, I'm going to post it up on the Google Plus community, Hip Hop is Bled. And, um, yeah, and whatever other blogs and things want to, you know, put it up. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure Asheru will tweet it out too. So, it was a good time. You know what I'm saying? Got it stuff. was. So, all right, sir. But yeah, I know you just got your new sync. You know what I mean? You just can't wait to get into his. Is it like robotic? Is it like does it have all type of robotic parts? To, you know, no, no. But it it only has like the one nozzle thing instead of the two taps, and uh, it was, so it pops out and everything. It was it like to come yeah, out. It, it's no, it doesn't pop out, but it doesn't have the two taps. It only has one the one thing that you turn either way. And it's okay. got like the metal background, the metal backing, because it was like leaking down the back, and like the wood was starting to rot. So it's like, it's it's good. So. <laughs> All right, cool. I'm gonna let you get to it. You know what I'm saying? Enjoy it. I'm gonna play maybe uh, maybe like 30 more minutes of music and then head out of here. You know what I'm saying? And uh, All right. until next week, we have a guy from uh, War Media. It's gonna be like a War Media takeover. 
for the next like three shows. So we got Guy, the founder of War Media, which is We Are Renegades. And then we have the two artists, well, two of the artists on War Media. So then we got Gene Gray the following week. Nice. And then Pharaoh Monch the following week. So, very cool. Yeah, so we got a lot of stuff going on. So, All right, sir, but thank you very much. Let me put up this overlay right quick and uh, thank everybody once again. I want to thank everybody that tuned in or who continues to tune in during the week and watch these videos or listen to the show. Um, like I said, you can find everything at itsourshow.net, kevingnottingham.com, chasemarch.com, and thewordisbond.com. All right, sir. So, yeah, till next week. All right. All right, sir, peace. be easy. You too. Peace. All right, peace, peace. All right, so now everybody that's still tuned into the podcast, that was awesome. Let me, uh, I want to play some joints. Uh, what do I want to play? What am I at here? Oh, yeah, I, I was talking about it, and then Ash Rue came up and dropped all sorts of knowledge on us. So I'm going to keep it going. I got a track. Uh, like I, I was mentioning uh, this Kevin, Ken, Kevin, Kendrick Lamar verse. The joint is crazy. I got that on deck. I got Amp Live production on deck. Uh, I got Bosco on deck. I got uh, Vigilante on deck. I'm going to start off some homegrown Ozone, Orlando Hip Hop. Uh, these are my peoples. Uh, L.O.T., Lovers of Truth, homegrown Ozone, Orlando Hip Hop. And it's called Echoes. Thank you guys for tuning in. And um, come back and shout out everybody. And then that'll be it. Appreciate you all. And uh, word. Be right back. Peace. Peace. Oh, by the way, of course, instrumental in the background, J. Dilla, Waves. All right. Peace. Dream. 